we're here in the gorgeous sunny South London today to meet Sophie from Gung Ho. She's a sustainable uh, fashion brand. She lives on a houseboat, she works in a container. So we're here to chat to her more and see what she's all about. So let's go. This is the boat, um, this is where we live, um, and this is the reason that we started doing the Plastics Ocean Mods collection, because um, we see it on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is actually, we've caught it bad timing. This is when the tide has actually just come out, but this is normally full. You can see here, normally full of plastics. We've got every tide. Coke bottles, Capri Suns, <laughs> like, <laughs> nail polish remover. Absolutely everything, like, you, you really, it's quite shocking. We always assume uh, like a lot of mounds of waste with different countries. We don't see it on a regular basis, so it's like out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Yeah. But it is here, you know. Well, actually, uh, one of the, the statistics is like 90% of all plastics or over that is um, comes from rivers yeah. when it comes into the sea, into the ocean. So if we can like do our bit on a, you know, once a month, just get people to come and actually be like, mm, see it en masse, see what the problem is, then it highlights it a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all aboard. Awesome. <laughs> So, studio time. Amazing. Uh, so straight away I can see <laughs> you're wearing one of your new prints. Yeah, this is actually one of my favourite ones. Um, it's something that I think when you first look at it, it just looks like a pretty bird print, um, which is the idea, because first and foremost, of course, it's supposed to be pretty. Um, but uh, you look a little bit closer and the birds have, um, well, nine out of 10 seabirds are found to have plastics in their stomach. So it's not just about under the sea that's affected by plastics in the ocean, it's above the sea too. Um, and so there's nine, there's ten different seabirds uh, that are affected by it, and nine of them have the toxic hazardous signs on their stomachs. So it's like the more you look, the more you see. Now you say it, I'm like, oh, clever. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's supposed to be subtle, like you don't want it to be too... Yeah, you don't want to ram the message down. You say you do three prints a season. Yeah. Um, so the other two that we've got, uh, this one is all about, um, it's supposed to look quite camouflage-y. Um, and the idea is that you're looking at turtles um, sort of swimming in and out, like, and you look a bit closer and actually they're caught in plastic sheeting. So it's sort of just a bit more of a like, oh, natural habitat, oh no, hang on, what's going on here? And then the other one that we have um, is our coral print. So this one, uh, so, Coral reefs make up um, less than 1% of the whole of the ocean, but they carry a quarter of all marine life, which is absolutely amazing. They do a great job. <laughs> um, but So this uh, print has all of the different um, species that are affected by microplastics in coral reefs, because that's a big problem. Um, and if you look a little closer, it's supposed to be like an all over print. It all kind of blends together, and then you have the cotton buds and the plastic bags floating in between all of these creatures. So everyone campaigned to get microbeads banned, but actually that is such a small part of the microplastic challenge that we're going through, you know. Yeah. People don't realise, so a lot of the time at the moment there's a huge, like, mate and brilliant in some cases, um, you know, they, take, they have new technology, they're taking plastics out of the ocean, which is brilliant, and that reusing it into making it into something else. There is like amazing stuff that you can do with it and there's a lot of like fabrics now made out of it but what people don't realise is amazing you've, you're using these recycled like plastics but actually when you wash it every time you wash it you've got the microplastics going back into the ocean again so it's still polluting in general natural fibres is where things have to be. So these are all natural fibres that you use with your Yeah clothes. pretty much. This collection is actually made out of tensile um, which is actually like wood fibre yeah which is amazing um, but yeah the tensile's got really nice soft quality and drape isn't it exactly it's actually a really high quality fabric yeah. and it prints beautifully and it's very airy um, 
it's good to wear any time of year. Yeah. Um, so where where do you get everything made? Is it uh, in London or? Yeah. So what we do is um, we get everything printed in Gloucestershire, and then we bring it to London and we make it in London. Um, we try to make everything as small and sort of local as possible, supporting small amazing businesses so yeah not going on the larger scale at all here we're, we're talking about really trying to find the people we want to want to work with yeah which is really nice know where your money's going so yeah i noticed um as well you produce your things in two sizes yeah we do so it was quite i mean it's quite a hard decision to make that one but the idea is basically like we use as much of the fabric as possible um so all of the cuts like fit into as much as we can, so as little wastage as possible. Each of the garments are um, made to fit and, and hang lovingly on, like, so extra small, small fits uh, a size 6, 8, 10, the uh, larger size is the 12, 14, 16. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, it fits everyone in different ways, yeah. but it's, it always, we try and make it in design so it looks good. Yes. That's, that's, that's the key. But and then the person who is wearing it can then style it their own way because some people some people might be an extra small but they might even get the bigger size because they like exactly they like it oversized it's so you know? personal yeah. and like personal style is the way that you know it's, it's all happening like one of my friends is very very tiny and the dress is made to be like sort of hang down um, and she chose the larger size anyway because yeah. she like absolutely loved the way it was so flowy on yeah. her. Maybe she was like, I feel like a princess. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what you want, isn't yeah. it? It's like it's ha it's whatever makes you feel good. Yeah, and that's that's the idea. You're wearing a piece of artwork. It's so much more than a piece of clothing. Like it, there's not many like. I'm not just saying but there's not many people that you see these days, even in like the sustainable in, like world, who really have that much of like a full story or like woven into every piece you know yeah well I guess that, that's the that's the idea behind it being like a political piece of artwork like it doesn't have to necessarily be political it can be like the first and foremost it has to be pretty it's got to be beautiful yeah. that's what people want like and that's how clothing should be it should be something that you put on and you feel fantastic in it and you just think this is a piece of me but actually if it's like you know going back to being your views then fantastic that's yeah. an extra added bonus. it's a bonus yeah for sure but it should be standard and I think that we want like I want Gung Ho to be a movement I don't want it to be a brand I want to do loads of collaborations like I want to push it and get people involved in current issues like through loads of different mediums and it's been really exciting and I can't wait to see where it takes us with it so we just finished chatting to Sophie at Gung Ho and really enjoyed meeting her and learning more about the brand and everything she's about. What we'd love to do is keep the conversation going for even longer. Like the video, subscribe, but comment, chat to us, tell us your thoughts. And we can't wait to make the next video. So see you next time. <laughs>